Today I'm joined by Nushka Fontaine. Nushka is boxer, silver medalist at the Rio Olympics, yep. amongst other notable successes, runner-up at the World Championships in the same year, 2016, European champion, 2014. Yeah, 15. Oh. 18. <laughs> okay, 15, 18. Okay, so we need to update Wikipedia then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Nushka, do you know what your name means? Uh, no, it doesn't really mean something, I think. My, okay. my parents uh, just saw it from, uh, I think it was a writer that's mm -hmm. called Nushka van Brakel, and yeah. they thought it would be a good name, and it suits uh, my sister's name, Sasha and Lara, as bit Russian. So. Okay. No, it's funny because I looked it up on on the internet and I found something that's a bit funny. <laughs> Independent, determined, persevering nature. You enjoy working with your hands. So yeah. That's kind of <laughs> a good thing. Yeah. And you desire to work on your own dreams. Okay. Yeah. Well. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. That's a good choice. Away, right? then. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay. What was your worst moment? In my boxing career? In your boxing I career think. or life? Um, well, in my life I didn't have a lot of uh, bad moments yet, so that's that's good. I want to keep it that way. But uh, And in my sports career I'm also quite lucky not to have uh, re really severe injuries or stuff. Um, I think the worst moment yeah, was maybe missing the 2012 Olympics, because mm -hmm. that was actually the first uh, Olympics where women boxing was introduced. and. Um, it was a bit early for me, but still there was a dream to participate and uh, I could have been there. I, d yeah. I didn't think I would maybe get a medal or I wouldn't win it, but I could have been there. But uh, And I won all my bouts the whole year, 2012. Uh, every tournament I went to, I, I won the gold medal. And then at the only qualification uh, tournament, uh, I didn't do it. So um, yeah, that was of course yeah, a moment like... Ouch, that's uh, yeah, a dream that didn't come true then. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that was a bit hard, but uh, also I knew I was still young and I had another uh, Olympic cycle to go and uh, yeah, things went, went out well later. So yeah, and there was another moment, I think the qualification for 2016, because that was four years later. Uh, so you've been training like almost eight years for the same uh, purpose. And um, then we had two tour uh, tournaments to qualify. So we, that was a bit better, but still I had two two chances. And the first was a European qualification and the second the world qualification. But my chances in the Europeans would be so much better. So we really were focused on the first qualification tournament. And then, yeah, I had a draw. I had a very good draw. And that was actually the, yeah the the fault that we made because we underestimated the first opponent completely okay. so uh yeah and if you look at the bout now i still think i won it but uh, it was too close uh, mm. I, I didn't box good and uh so it was a complete surprise mm. and uh yeah i'm really happy that i made it good in the in the world cha world championships later i qualified so yeah. all turned out well but that moment was really like a shock like yeah. what is happening here so that's a, another uh, situation hmm. to deal with okay yeah and if you reflect back what did you learn from these two moments um as i said like in the first moment i, I was in 2012 I, I was young it was okay and we just went out on a holiday and i forgot about it and i all started again actually for the new olympic cycle there was mm -hmm. enough to to win uh, i didn't have any medals at European or world uh, top level yet. And the second experience was really uh, interesting because uh, we had like the, the, the tournaments were very close to each other, like only I think four weeks in between the first and the second chance to qualify for Rio. Mm. And when I was there, it was in Turkey and I lost on the first day. So I was there for the rest of the week mm. already like, um, yeah thinking about, okay, I lost, I, when I come back home, I have to work on it. I still have three more weeks to give it all to try to participate in the Olympics. And uh, the experience was when I got home, all the other people from the Holland, fr from my country and from my, 
my village uh, were like, oh, what happened? And you didn't, I heard uh, you didn't qualify. And uh, oh, I read in the papers that you that you're not going to the Olympics. Is it right? And and that oh. kept on going yeah. for all the two weeks that we sh were still in Holland. So that was yeah. really interesting because I had to focus on the next goal mm -hmm. and I was already going there. I, I made the step and I, you know, was thinking about the new qualification moment and my last chance, yeah. but all the people around you were still pulling you back to what happened in Turkey. So yeah. that was really uh, interesting to keep focusing. Um, in the meanwhile, that all the others are trying to, <laughs> yeah, you know, get me out of uh, of that focus. Yeah. yeah, and it all turned out well. And you know, afterwards you can laugh about it. And of course, I learned to never ever underestimate anyone anymore. Yeah. So that's a good lesson, but it was an expensive lesson. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. So, what was your best moment? Um, yeah, I think that that moment when I did qualify. Uh, yeah. Maybe that was for us uh, because the women boxing in 2016 only had like 12 participants in, in a weight category. So it, the, um, to qualify was maybe even harder yeah. to be there because, okay, when there are like maybe there were like uh, 36 uh, boxers in the world championships and only the first four were going. Yeah. So then you knew I had to win three bouts in a row or I'm out. Yeah. And, when we are when we were in in rio there were only 12 persons left so then you know okay now i'm now i'm here now i'm going for a medal and for nothing else but mm. uh qualification was uh, was hard yeah yeah okay and then when that happened of course like i said 2012 you tried so it's been a long cycle and um then i had to win three mm. bouts and uh yeah, I won the first, I won the second, and then, okay, you can't really, like, think about it all the time. Like, I have to win tonight, I have to win this mm -hmm. bout or I'm out. But you have to do it. So, uh, you, yeah, don't think too much, but, um, yeah, then the, the bout started, and first round, I was down. She was she was up okay. in points, so, okay, you have still <laughs> three more rounds. That's, like, six minutes to make it up now, and, yeah, fortunately, that happens. Yeah. And that's like really like, okay, it worked out and uh, we did it. And then it's actually only getting started. Mm. So uh, good experience. Yeah. I heard there were plans of, they name a street after you in your hometown. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's happen? correct. Yeah, the, okay. I think the houses are, they're building the houses now. So okay. I think there will be a moment to, uh, to open that street maybe okay. uh, next year. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Nice. If you could go back in time 10, 15 years, yeah. what advice would you give your younger you? Whew, um, sometimes I think when I have a daughter, I'm not going to let her box. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> maybe no. Um, yeah, you could say like I only started when I was 19. Mm -hmm. I made a switch from the Taekwondo and maybe people would say, why didn't you start earlier? But I'm actually happy it turned out how it turned out. Because in boxing, it's, it's it's not a sport that you start like at the age of five or something. Mm -hmm. It's not like judo and to start so early. And when you are, okay, 12, 13, you can do your first boxing bout. But we see that um, when boxers come from the youth and junior weight categories and they go up to elite, it's a big step. So it feels like it doesn't really care uh, matter you know, if you take the first years or not, hmm. and that experience com comes later. And uh, okay. so I think I would in sports, I, I would think it's okay to do uh, Taekwondo or what, hmm. some kind of sport. And I think I learned a lot in the Taekwondo because it, it's uh, it is where my fighting spirit, hmm. you know, uh, came up. And um, yeah, it's also a bit physical and you have to think about it because you have also some kind of katas, you know, in karate, mm -hmm. you have all the techniques and the styles and that makes you uh, see a person and copy what they do because you have to mm -hmm. think with all the punches, you have to think, okay, how is his feet or hands or how are, you know, you really have to observe uh, well. And I think that helped me when I came to boxing, you know, you see someone do, do it, something mm -hmm. and you just copy it. So okay. that helped. Yeah, you're jumping ahead. I had this uh, oh. later <laughs> down as a question, but yeah. it's good. <laughs> Um, you said it does. It seems like it's not that important if you make a transition sooner or later. Yeah. Also with this skill acquisition. 
uh, in um, terms of learning basic techniques? Yeah, I think so because um, yeah, I don't know. But you see, you just see that some boxers are from junior up, and mm -hmm. you have to start all over again. That's okay. that's how it feels. So I was 19 and I started in Elita, and I must say, woman boxing was a bit uh, low le low level mm. back in the days, and it. Uh, you know, it's raising. We're raising the game now, and uh, mm. so maybe I have. I'm lucky that I, you know, I could go with the flow up mm. to the next level. But I'm happy uh, the way that went. Okay. Cool. What are the habits that make you a successful athlete person? Ah, um, I have to think about that. Um, well. I think it's um, it starts with a little bit of discipline. Oh, maybe it starts with some passion. You have mm -hmm. to, you know, it was like 10 years ago when I went to the boxing club for the for first time. I didn't really like it, but I only went there to become better in my taekwondo. Someone said, oh, you should go to the boxing uh, gym. And so I did, but I, I didn't really like it the first time. It was all, you know, big men and uh, sweat all over the place. It's not so, not so uh, <laughs> nice. But I did feel my arms were terrible hurt. And uh, I, I thought, okay, it, it must be good for me. So I, I went the next week and then my, my trainer said, okay, uh, I'll come here and show me something. Oh, you're good. And uh, do you want to go and com in competition? And like, well, that. That was really nice. So, but it started with passion that you uh, see, okay, I like this sport and I want to go like every day again and again. And uh, that's like number one. I think you have to love it uh, mm. or you won't be successful. And, but we see that a lot of times in the, in the boxing gym. We see, we see some boys coming in and oh, whoa, they, they, they're there every day. They're training every day. They're training hard. But like after three months, there's something else, you know, and mm. there's so there's no focus. So I think focus is important and the discipline to keep going. And mm. also, you know, when the sport isn't nice every day, sometimes you just get punched in the face and, uh, mm. you know, it's not, not always fun. But you just have to stand up again and the next day uh, things will go better if you keep on doing it. Mm. You know, I also had some periods that sometimes it's not working out, you know, you go to the gym and you get beat up and you go the next time you get beat up again. And, but if you keep on working on the things you have to work on, things will go better hmm. today or tomorrow. And I think hmm. that's important. Okay. Yeah. If we're talking about discipline, you are in a sport that has weight categories. So yeah. also weight management plays yeah. a role. Yeah. So how much do you go over your competition weight mm -hmm. in the off season? Uh, well, I'm lucky to be, uh, yeah, my normal weight is just, I think it's, it's just in the middle of a uh, weight class. So I'm, uh, my weight class is, uh, up to 75 kilos from 69 to 75. And that's if I just, uh, train and eat normal, I, I am 74, okay. 75 maximum. So I don't have to do a lot for that. And, uh, yeah, if I would stop training and eat whatever I want for three weeks and I will be maybe maximum 77 but um, I'm lucky to not have yeah. that struggle because a lot of boxers yeah. also in the lower weight categories yeah, yeah you know are training uh, with uh, sauna suits and that's terrible they can't eat anything and yeah. that's I'm always strong you know when I have to compete I'm always uh, able to eat what my body needs and yeah. for training and a lot of Boxers are already like dehydrated and mm. uh, yeah, they have to train hard and eat almost nothing. So yeah. uh, I'm lucky. Do you have a morning routine? No, yeah. actually not. Not, not something uh, written down or something, but yeah, just wake up, have breakfast. When I'm at home, uh, I walk with the dog, but it's yeah, nothing special actually. Okay. But uh, yeah, we always go, go out and have a 30 minute uh, walk with a dog at least so that's mm. it's a nice start but it's not something that's scheduled or something okay. yeah. any other structures in your day that you follow no. religiously or no not really but uh, now we are six weeks before the world championships and then uh, 
I try to uh, yeah straighten things out like mm. uh, lifestyle like okay I just write it down I have to go to bed 11 o'clock every night and sleep at least eight hours and things mm -hmm. like that um, yeah so I do think about it like mm. take rest in between uh, sessions and also have fun have mm -hmm. fun every day that's my uh, my goal just in between the sessions also do something you like and uh, yeah now I'm starting also because we are working so much in the gym but I was also thinking okay I I have to do everything about it what I can so also uh, when I'm at home I don't want to work out at home never because home is like a place to rest but I I'm working on analyzing my opponents and stuff mm. now so I, but I don't really like doing that. You know, some people mm. like to watch it all the day or watch themselves. I don't like to watch myself boxing. I it's yeah. no, it's not something that I look forward to. It's always, I'm always, uh, you know, think oh, maybe tomorrow or the day after. But now I'm uh, telling myself to do it every day for like 15 minutes, only watch one opponent or watch uh, my own sparring. And I have to analyze that to, to know what to uh, improve, so. How do you prepare for important moments? Yeah, um, I think you're uh, with your mind, you're thinking about it a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it also goes a little bit in steps because when we go to a European Championships or World Championships, uh, I always print print it out like the schedule. I always wanted, you know, to, to see what I did and to see what I'm gonna do. So that's uh, like in the living room on the table. So I see that every day and I write it. What did I do? What am I, go am I going to do? You know, like planning when is the rest day and stuff. Uh, I have a bit influence on my schedule myself because I'm just working with two coaches and it's a really individual program. So mm -hmm. that's ideal because we can say, okay, today I'm really tired because it was a bit rough yesterday. So today we'll take it slow and that's, that's good. So I'm busy with it every day. Um, yeah. And when you leave for a tournament, you're really counting. Like I know today is like, um, five weeks and three days to, you know, you're counting every day. Mm -hmm. So you know where you are and how much time you have left and yeah, just before you're leaving, it's also like, okay, it's the last uh, strength and conditioning training and it's the last boxing training at home. And then it's the first boxing training in, in, in the country that you box. And yeah, things are getting sharper at the end. So uh, in the pro in the start of the program, we have a lot of uh, volume, like and later on training sessions become shorter and intenser. And mm -hmm. yes, yeah, always uh, the same way, actually. A lot of uh, pads, we, we work with the mids on the end and some shadow boxing. And yeah, then in the tournament, we always have like the draw. That's uh, also a moment to look forward to an exciting moment also, because yeah, that's, you know, then you're going to know what your path to medals can be. And uh, yeah, you, we never really know what day we fight. So when we arrive to a tournament and then we all have the weigh in. And then you know, okay, it's it's tonight or it's tomorrow or in three days. And then we make another plan. Okay, we have three days. Uh, we're gonna watch videos today and train a little bit on it. And hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then it's also a little bit, uh, yeah, you have to adjust to the circumstances uh, where you are. Sometimes it's, it's cold outside or it's hot or there's no place to train. So we really train like on the parking lot or in the hotel room. There's always, uh, yeah, it's nice. Okay. Yeah. And then on the moment itself, so you, may, you step in that ring, yeah. Olympic final. Yeah. How do you get ready? For the Olympic final? Well, just like uh, all the other fights, actually, my, my, my day is always uh, pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't do a lot that day. You know, we have the weigh in is always uh, pretty early, like, so, like uh, seven o'clock in the morning. So sometimes you have to go in a bus uh, at 6.30 to go to the venue to weigh in. Then we go back, have breakfast, and sometimes we watch a video of the opponent, but sometimes we already did that two days before. Mm -hmm. That depends on whether you fought the last night or not. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we are like have a little walk or something. We don't train. We don't really train on the day that we fight. 
so sometimes in the past we did something just to um, that my trainer uh, acts like he is my opponent you mm -hmm. know uh, to adjust to the style but we yeah. don't do some intense training but we do a walk like to shaking the legs out and stuff and get some fresh air mm -hmm. and then we have lunch and I'm actually in bed the whole day the rest of the day we're just in the room doing nothing and um, yeah most mostly it's like four o'clock you have to uh, and then I always write it down what I'm go am I gonna do how's the day gonna look you know uh, like six o'clock get up seven o'clock breakfast uh, and uh, yeah then maybe at four o'clock I wake up take a shower check all the bags do we have uh, everything again and yeah you just go there maybe some music hmm. or something and uh, yeah then it's showtime and of course we always make a plan how to beat the opponent so that's basically what's going through my head the whole day mm -hmm. <laughs> and I sometimes I even want to stop it but it keeps on going mm. you can't stop it because I have to remember again you just try to have that plant so good in your head that that it comes out on the right moment because mm. sometimes we're in the ring and just uh, it's just instinct that's working you know I hear the coach in the corner. I can hear what he says, but the rest is just instincts. It's just happening, mm. and it's uh, so you hope that you have that plan so good in your mind that that it will go out basically mm. in, from your instinct. And uh, yeah, it's funny. Mm. Yeah, you mentioned plans, so that just yeah. jumped in my head. I need to ask you that question. There's this famous quote from Mike Tyson, right, where someone said, yeah. "Oh, I have a plan." <laughs> And yeah, then yeah, he yeah. says, True. you have that plan until I hit you in the mouth. Yeah, yeah. Everyone has a plan until they get punched in yeah. the face. Yeah. And it's true. You have to, uh, sometimes the plan is not working. Or I want to do what we discussed and it's not working. Mm -hmm. Like we are, um, maybe you are really strong and the plan is to attack you and get out. Because mm -hmm. uh, otherwise you will hit me and it will be too much. So, But sometimes moving is not going the way you want and then mm. you have to make a new plan in a split second or you will hear okay stop going in and out n do something else you know you just have to do that and um, you know I'm not always feeling what I should do sometimes I'm I'm inside there and it's not working and I'm doing something but my coach is better at it uh, fortunately mm -hmm. he knows so he sees what's happening from the from another side and he said okay step out go back with the left hook and maybe that's the solution so it's always better to listen mm -hmm. oh yeah and that's not even easy sometimes you hear what he says and it's not even easy to to do it at that moment or you're sometimes you're really really tired without a reason mm -hmm. you're in the hallway in the third round and you can't go anymore and but i have to keep trying and uh make sure it's enough to get the win. Mm. Yeah. Nice. How do you overcome setbacks when things don't go your way? Yeah, things um, go a, a lot of times do go my way. But uh, like I said, like a few years ago when you didn't, when I didn't qualify for that tournament, um, yeah, it just went on a holiday or something. You mm. just have to think, okay, boxing is important for me but it's on the other way it's, it's just a part of your life so when things are not going in in the right direction you have to maybe take a step back for a moment and enjoy other things in life and come back later you know yeah. maybe st stay away from the boxing gym for like two weeks don't do any workouts and uh, yeah then you feel like you want to come back again mm. okay now in interesting question that I've written down for myself is mm -hmm. in preparation for the Olympic Games 2016 there was a lot of movement in the Federation and you yeah. know, uncertainty of training location yeah. and coach yeah. and here and there there was also a bit of movement around your person and I remember what you and me sat down there in the cafeteria and I don't know exactly what I said but you said I remember that you said okay. you know I'm just here for my boxing and I just want to improve my boxing yeah so clearly everything that happened must have affected you somehow, I yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah. But how did you stay on track so that you could still get the result you wanted to get yeah, towards well, the Olympics? That was Olympics? Uh, actually in like 2014, 2015 okay. that we had a lot of troubles. And um, yeah, 
it's funny how it all started. But anyway, uh, there was a moment that my personal coach couldn't be my coach anymore. And I had to work with someone else. And I didn't truly believe in, in the way they, they think we should do it. So uh, then I, what happened was I actually took a step back and I was working with my personal coach. But then... Uh, yeah, they actually said, like, you have to come with us or you're not in the team. So you're not going going to the European Championships. And yeah, that was my main goal. I was working for that. So mm. I had to make a decision. OK, am I going to stick with my plan and not participate or do where I, I've, I've been training all the time for the European Championships? So I took the, that step and I went with them. Um, yeah, the way I, it worked out is because I won the gold medal there. So, mm. yeah, people always say that if you keep uh, performing, then you will, you know, mm. end up at the highest point. And, um, yeah, I know after that European Championships, I came back to the Federation, actually, and I said, okay, I don't want to do this anymore on your way. So I actually said, okay, if, you, if I have to do it this way, I'm not going further. And I... In my mind, I didn't know if it was the right uh, step to take, but they said, okay, you're actually right. And mm. um, so uh, they gave me permission to train with my own trainer. So, uh, mm. and the best part is that actually, since we did that again, we just, the, you know, the way was free. Mm. We could go on w what we wanted to do all the time. So, mm. uh, yeah, I, there was no more struggles anymore and only thinking about boxing and then European championships was gold and the European Games was gold and all pointed out well. So, mm. yeah. Cool. <laughs> and we're really happy that things are better now. There's yeah. no uh, single struggle anymore. It's, uh, Federation is behind us and the IOC is behind us. And yeah, mm. it's good. Okay. <laughs> Do you have a role model? Not really. No. 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 I haven't met one yet uh, that, yeah, you know, we, maybe the perfect role model doesn't exist. And uh, <laughs> you know, maybe I have someone, yeah, you know, I made one in my mind okay. that I want to become like, I know, I think I know what I should do to be yeah, the best version of me. Hmm. Interesting. And, uh, yeah. Cool. We just strive to be that person. <laughs> What's the best advice you have received and who gave it to you? Ooh. I know uh, one good advice was on the way to the European Games um, matches mm -hmm. was from Francesco, also in the National mm -hmm. uh, Federation here. And uh, we were on, on the way to, our bow to a bout that I already um, beat her three times. But I was like getting a li little bit bored because I had to fight her four time and stuff. And uh, it feels like you can only lose. But he said, okay, uh, he had some experiences and he said, okay, you beat her. So you have to make sure that in the first 30 seconds, she feels like you're gonna beat her again. Hmm. And uh, that's what I kept in mind. And sometimes when I fight a girl now that I already fought, I'm thinking about that. Okay, I have to let her know in the first 30 seconds that feeling that she has a feeling like, oh gosh, it's happening again. She's hmm. beating me again. So there has to be a really good, clear shot in her face in the first 30 seconds. And um, yeah, it even makes me think when I'm in the ring, I'm even thinking like, oh, it's gonna happen again. It's happening again. and. That's a good one. Okay, cool. It's a funny one. <laughs> mm, nice. How does a typical training day look like? Um, I like to train twice a day. Mm -hmm. Some people say only once or some people say three times. And we just came back from the USA. And some people trained for four times there in a day. And in my opinion, that's, that's way too much. Uh, so I like to do two good training sessions. So that's or two boxing sessions or one strength and conditioning and one, one boxing session. And uh, so I have a lot of time because uh, both of the gyms are like in 15 minutes from my house. So I have, a, yeah, like a free day also because I have some free moments. Of course, you have to train, you have to rest and you have to make sure uh, like you cook and you sleep right and stuff. But uh, our gym opens at 10. So like I said, I walk with the dog in the morning, have breakfast and then go to the gym at 10. 
uh, on a day that I box twice. That's like a training session from 10 to 12. Then I just have lunch and go out with the dog again or do something else. And then in the evening, it's uh, boxing with opponents, like with uh, sparring or stuff or back session. Mm. And on other days, I have a training, uh, strength and conditioning session in the afternoon. So then I have actually a free morning where I can also do some, some work as a personal trainer or some other uh, like boxing work clinics mm. or stuff. And um, yeah, strength and conditioning sessions are also really quite intense. So I like to make the schedule that if I have a strength and conditioning training, that the evening training is not sparring. So that's more technical training or, or on the mids or on the backs because backs don't hit back. So if you're tired, mm. like there's no problem. You can just go on and when you're tired, okay, you just keep on going and it doesn't really matter if you're, you know, slowing down. But when you're sparring and you're really tired, okay, then you, you're just gonna get punches. Mm. So um, try to make a good schedule. Mm. There's a question out of personal interest in box from a standpoint of a strength and conditioning coach. Yeah. You see a lot of boxers believe in running yeah, hours yeah, and hours yeah. of running every yeah. day, yeah. first thing in the morning. Yeah. I remember a time I was still a student back then, but I was in some hotel and the Rocky Gianni, a German professional boxer, okay. he was there. Yeah. Every morning he yeah. ran yeah. two hours or yeah. something. Yeah. What's your take on that? Yeah, I don't know, uh, like why that uh, happened. Because I I think a good cardio session is good for a lot of things in your mm -hmm. body. So I do believe in that, and I do sometimes run like for thirty minutes or forty five, or that's just jogging like once in a while. But mm -hmm. um, I uh, would like to have strength and conditioning instead of running because. Mm -hmm. Uh, running, if you're running, should be interval because boxing is only three times three minutes, and in the three minutes, it's not one tempo; it's it's up and down. And um, I think I do get my uh, uh, how do you call it endurance and stuff from other sessions. Like you mm. can also work with that in sparring or on the backs with uh, interval sessions on the backs, yeah. and also in strength and conditioning. Because my strength and conditioning is not like powerlifting all day, mm -hmm. but it's intense. It's also high level. And in the strength and conditioning uh, gym, we also like run stairs or something, but that's just short. Like mm -hmm. run, the, run the stairs twice, uh, pick up a sled twice and run again. Like that's short interval sessions actually. Um, mm. Yeah, and I do believe in the strength and conditioning because a lot of boxers don't do mm -hmm. anything uh, with weight. And I think, yeah, being strong in the ring is just uh, something that you you should work on. Because, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I sometimes I feel it. You know, when uh, you, boxing seems like a sport, like you, you don't have any weights in your gloves, so it's just in the air. So it feels like, why why should you be strong or something but of course you feel the impact when you get a punch in your face i also get punches in my face but you have to m make a punch in in the face of your opponent that she doesn't forget you know mm. that that makes her that she doesn't want to attack you mm. and the strength and conditioning is not uh, only for the punches but there's a lot of uh, clinching in boxing you know there's a lot of moments that we will be uh, you know back to back to each other and then you can just feel it when you're stronger sometimes mm. we're like that and i just feel my opponent breathing uh, really heavy and then i know like mm. she's breathing really heavy and i'm i'm closer so i should hear myself breathing heavy and that's not the point you know i i feel like okay i can beat her on this and uh yeah they say yeah i don't know the saying in english but they say you're as uh, strong as your weakest you know uh, a chain is as strong yeah. as its weakest yeah. link yep yeah. so also in boxing, the whole body should be strong. Yeah. If you don't have a strong core or something, I will push you back and, uh, you know, so mm. it all has to be on point. And I think you have to work on that in the gym. Mm. And cool. it's also a lot of uh, injury prevention, I think, stuff like that. Yeah. Do you want to nominate someone to be interviewed? Um, I don't really know who I would like to nominate, but I would like to nominate a sport. So you can choose a person, mm -hmm. but I would like to nominate rugby. Rugby? Yeah. Okay. I know it's not in the national building here or in Arnhem, but um, 
I think rugby is also uh, like a sport that's uh, gaining uh, popularity, like rugby sevens and stuff, and it's a rough sport. So it, uh, I would like to know more about it. Mm. I'd love to Are get someone from the All Blacks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. That's really yeah. cool. Good. <laughs> Where can people find you? Uh, you know, you mean on the internet? Yeah, uh, yeah just my name, Nuska Fontaine, on Facebook, Instagram. Okay. Yep. Cool. <laughs> Nushka, thanks a lot for Thank your time. You. That was really good. Thank you.